Joining us once again to do that is Garrick Utley, former NBC News correspondent and anchor and now president of the Levin Institute of the State University of New York. And also with us is Christia Freeland, the U.S. managing editor of Britain's Financial Times. Welcome to both of you. Pleasure to be here. Well, let's start off with uh, President Obama being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this, first of all, Christia? I think what we're going to see is a very polarized reaction. I think on the one hand, the president's opponents, especially in the United States, are going to seize on this as another example of, remember uh, that McCain campaign line mm -hmm. about Obama being the one and being sort of prematurely anointed? Mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to see people focusing again on that sort of idea, this notion of here he is winning this fabulous prize, but what actually has he done? Mm -hmm. And also with a little bit of the right stirring in this notion that maybe the, the world loves him, but what has he done for the United States? Garrick, what are your thoughts? I mean, some people uh, have per perhaps sort of expressed, as you were saying, surprised that this has happened, uh, that it's happened perhaps too soon in his presidency. Well, first of all, the, any criticisms or questions should not be sent or addressed to the White House, but to the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize yes. Committee right in to, Oslo. Right They're the people. people. Oslo. <laughs> and I can understand that this is being given in the sense it's aspirational. Let's put it that way. It's the triumph of hope, perhaps. Uh, it is symbolically important. Uh, yes, in the traditional sense of the Peace Prize, it comes early, perhaps too early, because there's no demonstrable achievement. But if the committee interprets its mission and the awarding of the prize as contributing to a peace process or peace atmosphere, you can make that argument. I agree with Chris, you're going to get a, uh, probably a polarized or at least a divided a, a opinion right here. At the same time, for Barack Obama to wake up this morning at 6 in the morning to learn that he has uh, uh, won the Peace Prize, the Nobel Award, at the same time knowing his biggest challenge is a war decision in Afghanistan and knowing that now he will need to go to Scandinavia at the end of the year give a speech about peace just as he has made a decision, we assume, on increasing uh, the war effort in Afghanistan. Talk about irony, but that goes with the job. Right. Well, well where is the president at with Afghanistan? Um, I mean, are we still seeing a great deal of skepticism about the, the various sort of positions that have been staked out, or are we moving closer now to a, a much more kind of nuanced approach as to what he's going to be doing in Afghanistan? I think inevitably it's going to be a nuanced approach. I think Garrick is absolutely mm -hmm. right that the uh, Nobel Committee has thrown in a new element into these debates. And I think the other sort of outside element that is going to figure in the debate about Afghanistan is the figure 9.8 percent, which is the unemployment rate. And I think that is going to weigh very, very heavily. The, the ills of the U.S. economy are going to be a huge issue in the mind of the president and his advisors as he thinks about how much American blood and treasure he is prepared to commit to an ongoing war. I think the main thing we should really look at is the way in which we see the White House and the president defining success. And the more narrowly we see American success defined in Afghanistan, the more the, the smaller we're going to see the U.S. commitment being. So, so that's the thing that I would focus on as this debate continues. Is it going to become just about containing al-Qaeda? Or will the larger issue of the Taliban, even the larger issue of nation building, remain on the agenda? Right. And this is something, Gary, that to, is now being thrashed Any out. process, now we're getting to the point of defining terms. What is the goal? Is it, Some people use the term victory. You're not going to have a traditional military victory. Then you're left with success, which I think is the proper term. How do you define success? Is it defeating the Taliban, at least, or containing them? Is it um, having a stable Afghan government, which seems highly unlikely in the foreseeable uh, future? Is it denying the uh, territory of Afghanistan and the border area of Pakistan to terrorists for their use? We said before that I think one of the great uh, strategic issues that Obama uh, faces here is not just the economy here, but the political considerations that he does not lose the mandate or the image of being a sound, secure, um, credible national security president. So somehow he's going to have to go along with uh, General McChrystal, who is talking about a counterinsurgency effort vis-a-vis -a, -vis a, a counterterrorism. Vice President Biden, we know, is talking about counterterrorism more than counterinsurgency, and Obama has to make that decision. But behind in, in his thinking, the back of his mind is always going to be this question. I cannot allow the terrorists to stage some kind of attack on, against an American target from Afghanistan or even along that border area of Pakistan. Right. Um, what about mm -hmm. the Pakistanis, though? Are they convinced that this is a mm -hmm. policy that will work? 
Pakistan is so opaque now. What are you talking about in Pakistan, the tribal areas? Are you talking about the Pakistani military? Are you talking about the civilian government right there? Uh, it's a mess right now. And that, as Vice President Biden is saying, is really the key issue. Uh, in Pakistan along that border area, and I haven't heard any good suggestions about that. I, I think that's absolutely right, and I think that part of the debate around Afghanistan is going to be, well, maybe we shouldn't be focusing on Afghanistan so mm -hmm. much. Maybe the real issue has become Pakistan, and maybe that means that there is not so much a focus on the military commitments in Afghanistan and more thinking about Pakistan and at what point does it become really a viable partner? How much control does Pakistan have of these areas? Mm -hmm. All right, Christia Friedland mm -hmm. and Gary Cutley, thank you very much to both of you for mm -hmm. joining us. Pleasure.